Hey guys, this is the XRP Cowboy. Hey, this is Billy. The sky is falling. What are we gonna do? You with the sad eyes. Don't be discouraged, no one realizes. It's hard to have courage in a world full of people. You can lose sight of it in the dark of this day. It kind of makes me afraid. I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors. And that's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. Colors are beautiful like a rainbow. I'm not trying to fake it, but I ain't the one to blame because there's no one home in my house of pain. The markets are crashing, all markets. Just found out the real estate starting to take industry is starting to take a little hit over in Florida. I had a buddy who bought a condo for almost 800k he just had it appraised and it was like 590 and i remember the last housing crash when it all burned florida it they were hit worse than anyone i know of i don't know but you know it was a delayed reaction for detroit they got it first you know we got interest rates hikes and it doesn't seem like they want to stop. We've got a green narrative. We got gas prices. I just saw this report about like the top 10 goods are up over 40%. Gasoline, used cars, orange juice. So first time in history, you're better off buying a new car than a used. I mean, all these shortages, everything, even the crickets for my bearded dragon have gone up like 30 something percent. And I said, what, do we have a cricket shortage? They said, no, it's just the cost of doing business. Boy, <laughs> who are you calling a boy? That's what I said. There's a lot to talk about, but I want to keep it quick and fast. Who knows? Who knows? I know there, you know, government's going to be potentially looking at the miners in August. Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin to me is just like, you know, uh, first time mover, like a MySpace, <laughs> you know, what's MySpace? You know, I worked with, I work with some young kids and they don't even know what MySpace is. Well, I'll tell you what, it was better than Facebook. That's for sure. You know, a lot of times they go to the wayside, uh, these first time movers. But my thing is, is, you know, with, with the, the, the economical uncertainty, I mean, we're definitely in a recession, you know, I noticed, you know, I, I went on one of those recruit, uh, indeed, I believe it's called. And I keep trying to find desk people for my shop and last two years. And it, literally I might get one or two or three responses per post. I was doing them every month and they were, I mean, just ridiculous, almost like spam. Um, but I posted, um, talk about quantitative ease tightening, I should say, you know, this tightening, I mean, I guess there's something to be said about it because my whole hotmail blew up today when I posted. I haven't posted in like four months. I mean, kind of happy about that, but kind of concerned. I mean, honestly, you know, this market's going one way and it's another leg down, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm like this close to selling all my, my, my coins except for, of course, XRP, Moon Baby, you know, except for my my rocket ticket. I'm not going to risk that. You know, I mean, I, why wouldn't I? I'm pretty sure I could get them 20% cheaper, but that's an aggressive trade and I've grown attached to them. But, you know, I keep teetering with this idea, but there is one thing that's keeping me going. You know, one thing we'll get to it. I mean, we've got the whales that don't want to see us swim, robbing and stealing like we don't exist. You know, <laughs> We've got this doomsday scenario. 
This is the first double bubble. Double bubble. <clears throat> we had the first one, 2018. We had all these investors who positioned themselves late or not at all, talked the market down while they were buying it on the way down, stealing our bags. A lot of people bought into it. We had manipulation with the uh, futures market to, bring, to destroy the price of Bitcoin, and it worked. We had the Chinese government, you know, banning it. We had everything in the world. Jamie Diamond, you know, you know, I, I look at, you know, Jim Cramer now is Jamie Diamond, talking it down, then talking it up, then talking it back down. They're all playing the game, talking their books. It's called talking their books, and it's not illegal. I got a quick video that gets into it. Um, cost of goods, I told you that, you know, inflation's around 8%. Come on, pump your, your car up with gas, buy some orange juice, buy some crickets, buy a used car. It's ridiculous. I got to, well, it's not about me. This is about you. What are you going to do now? Sell? You know, that's what I ask myself. What are you going to do? Are you going to just go and sell now? After things are down 70, 90 percent, well, that ship had left, left the station. That train had left the station. But, I mean, nothing surprises me. Every time I think it's taken its last leg, here's, it's got one more. It's like a centipede, a, millip, a millipede, the crypto market. I mean, it's exhausting, you know? I wrote something down. I don't know if it's worth anything. Oh, oh, that was just whatever. We'll get into that um, at the end of this. But <clears throat> anyways, you got Gary Ginsler talking about, you know, how you can't um, guarantee, you know, a return in a speculative market. You guys, you know what that means? You know what he just said? Nothingness. Nothingness. There's no guarantees in life. All markets are speculative. All it takes is Apple to give you bad earnings and the price will drop. If they say the wrong thing with the, it's always, we're always investing in the future. They could say it was horrible, but if they give you a good forecast, you know, for what's coming, the price goes up. You know, we see it every day after earning reports. You know, it's all speculative. And if anyone's going to tell you differently, they're lying. You know, every stock in history eventually re has lost 80% of its value. Apple will too one day. I get it. It's going to be around for a while, but, you know, they're getting into all these different areas. But every stock, historically speaking, that's speculation. We're, we're, we've got companies trading 10 times earn, earnings, growth stocks 50 times earnings. So people aren't invested 50 years out. They're just invested in the speculation that next year will be better than this. And once that stops, the stock dumps, the equity dumps. This is important because it applies to crypto. You know, um, this is why we have dividend stocks. You have companies that give a dividend, they go to dividends because they lost their growth. So people are just in them for safety at that point for the, the dividend return. And once they remove the dividend, what happens to the stock price? No longer, no stability. And people... Pull the companies or take away, cut dividends all the time. It's all speculation. You can't see the future. You can't, you can, you can prepare yourself, position yourself in tax, tech, like, or you're like, I, I could, you know, crypto's like tech to me. It's, it's like a growth tech stock, you know, but you, there's so much uncertainty. You know, you better know what you own if you're going to play the big dog game. Are you going to be riding ponies, you know? It's, there's no joke. And now we've got the same cycle of the dot-com where they, you know, they, they're, it bubbled because the retail got in first. That's me and you. And then the big, big whales talked it down, crushed the price, and then bought it and accumulated, and then it ran. But you never see a double bubble. This, that's what we got in crypto. That's how big this is. This is the largest asset class that, it, it, this is going to dwarf tech, okay? I would argue it is tech. But um, if you, we individualized it, 
this is good. this will be the greatest asset class of our lifetime. Okay, it's you know, and we're in it, but it's scary because they could take this all the way down to the floor in a blink of an eye, in a blink in a blink of an eye. That's why I'm selling all my my coins except XRP. <laughs> Listen, Billy's not selling anything. Okay. That's a sheep. Somebody that's watching Jim Cramer. He's listening. He's he's talking Jim's book. Okay. We're not going anywhere. Um. Point is, is for Gary to say you can't get returns on a speculative asset. <laughs> I beg to differ, buddy. And I know a lot of people who agree with me. I do want you to see this. I want you to like and subscribe to my channel. Help me get to a thousand. I've made a thousand videos trying to get to a thousand. But I could just get one sub. <laughs> I love your comments too. You know, if you have any questions, I'm here. You know, ask. But I want you to see this. This is the playbook, okay, of these idiots. And they do it, they do it, and they do it, and it's not illegal. I think this digital perspective, I, I like him, but there's also something he talks about that I totally think is ridiculous. We'll get. Let me see the volume. All right, here we go. Hello to him or anything, but I think I did see him there. But he talks and lays out perfectly here in this clip from a couple years ago. Just listen to it. About how the you largest are. players really pretend that they don't like this space. They do what they call talking their book. <laughs> they're buying up the market in this space the whole time they're saying on mainstream media that they think the market's crap. It'll never be anything. And their influence helps to suppress the market while they build their portfolio. Take a listen. Why are you calling this the great crypto conspiracy? Okay. And when you explained it to me, yeah, it it's really people should go to jail, but it's not illegal. No. Um, and this is really horrible. And it's why we all feel publicly so freaked out, but they are feasting on our savings. Um, and it's it's a an enormous robbery. Um, quite honestly, it's a, it's a huge transfer of wealth that's happening right now. The last time I saw something like this was back during 1994 to 1995. In the, in the early uh, to mid-90s, individuals were making just enormous amounts of money buying companies like Dell, AOL, Microsoft, uh, Netscape, and some of these smaller internet stocks. And the institutions have completely missed that bull market. And so they were scoffing at these so-called lemmings. And so during 1994 to 1995, we had a bit of a bear market. And so, again, institutions were up saying that, oh, anybody buying Internet stocks, you're idiotic. And so you had a lot of people selling their AOL, selling their Microsoft, selling their Dell shares. Guess who was buying? It was the institutions. If you look at a chart of institutional allocation, to uh, venture capital internet deals. We've seen this with Goldman Sachs. We've seen this with Jamie Dimon. You know, we've seen this with all the big institutions, even our friend Warren Buffett. Um, not buying it directly, indirectly, but still a whale. It doubled between 1994 to 1995, which was exactly when institutions were saying, oh, this is just a market for idiots. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be buying this stuff. Mm -hmm. So they, they literally stole all this wealth that should have been in the hands of individuals that own Dell, Microsoft, and AOL. And then from 1995 to 2000, of course, you know, we saw $5 trillion come into the market in the biggest bull market we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So this blueprint of creating fear in order to get cheap prices is, is nothing new. So you know... And there you have it, the perfect analogy using the internet dot com boom and the bubble. I mean, you got Jim Cramer trying to make his life's money doing just this. He's been activated. You got BK from CNBC shorting it, and that's someone I never thought would turn. It just it's very clear to me that there's a narrative here, and it is a double bubble, and ultimately. The question is, how low will they let it go? I think reasonable 
is 20K, it's its previous all-time highs, because the market's fighting back so hard. But these are the powers that be, you know. So it's very concerning. But there is an out here, and we'll get to it. And I wanted to show one more video. You guys have probably seen it, but I think we should watch this again because it falls into that narrative, and it's a nice little cherry on top. This guy's a trip. I, I don't know why I like him, but I like him. <laughs> idea moment as crypto is moving through this threshold to find on by the end of this year they blew up or imploded you can watch D digital perspective from you know, the other side of that bad. the young ones also I, I bought really a lot good, of dot com but... stocks in 1999 when they blew up or imploded uh they were scared off the market for years until then the other bubble started which was the housing market bubble and the the mortgage bubble yep, they just so keep going how long bubbles. do you think if you if you had to guess how long does the washout in crypto for investors how long does it lengthen i don't know if you want to call it a bear market or a crypto winter or whatever what just happened i call it hell people start dipping their it's just hell. fingers back into cryptocurrency again yeah i'm glad you brought up the dot com the dot bomb the the thing that blew up because it was younger people that were all interested in, in um, the internet and all of that. And the older people said, oh, God, you can't put your credit card on the internet. Yeah. Somebody's going to steal your money. And, 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 they'd say, and they'd say things like, oh, God, I would never use email. It's got to be physical. Or I've gotta, the jerks I, I only want to invest in hardware, us, something I can <laughs> hold and feel. Um, those young people were right. The, the internet happened. It was huge. It got concentrated into some companies that really became extraordinary. Um, some of them went the you know, way of pets.com or whatever, but some of them became Amazon, and Google, and a big part of Apple, Facebook. There's some big companies, trillion dollar companies that came out of that okay. internet. Well, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, is going into an industry that's even bigger than what the internet was. And, and there you have that. Now, he's obviously a huge that. Bitcoin investor. Tim Draper, very nice Bitcoin, guy. I have but... met him. Uh, you know, look, I mean, you know, I think this his point a, here is really the, it, it, the salient point is there, right? Is that there are going to be a handful of companies, just as Brad Garlinghouse has said, that 99% of cryptos are going to go away. And then you're going to have those few remaining that really rise up from the watershed moment that I believe we're in. And it's not over. And we just saw another uh, exchange or, or uh, wallet or what was it, Vault, I believe now, has halted their trading and stuff online. So, you know, th th things are not over. And remember, the SEC has basically promised that they're going to sue an exchange. That hasn't happened yet. That's going to drive the price in the markets down if that happens. And USD Tether, possible collapse there. This is another quick clip of the struggle that we all have, including Tim Draper, huge investor in this space, about Gary Gensler taking a 180 from his time at MIT. Take a quick listen yeah, here. Yeah, you got to hear this, I guess. Investors. So is Gary Gensler, as you look at him and the crypto world, is he, you know, Darth Vader or is he Obi-Wan Kenobi? Yeah, I'm still struggling with this because I, I got to know him. We were on a panel together and and uh, we were actually in front of a bunch of people from the Fed and we were on a panel together before he got like the job <laughs> and he was um, delightful and had a great um, sense and he taught cryptocurrency at MIT and I thought, hey, perfect he choice. Sure. He's and all of a sudden, he took this job, and he all of a sudden, he's like back in the 1940s, <laughs> and he's working with um, regulations that were created 80 years ago and trying to apply them to whoever he can. And, and he's going after, you know, some startup comes up with something in a sandbox, and all of a sudden, the SEC's on them. That's not going to encourage innovation. And I would be, I, I think he, he really needs to figure out how to strike the right balance or you, even back how off. How do you counter him looking at you and saying, Tim, 
it can't guarantee a return on an asset that is speculative. And then I wanted to end with that. So it's just ridiculous. We've all heard that. You know, it's, I mean, we're living in a dream world. It's just someone's like not allowing us to sleep long enough to enjoy it. You know, this market, this doomsday scenario, it's happening. It's already happened, you know. Um, so what do you do now? What do you do? You going to sell at this point? Maybe get lucky? Here's the problem. The whole world knows it's going to go down. Bitcoin's still at 20K. The market's following Bitcoin right now. And when the whole world knows something, usually it's a, you know, we get a big surprise and things go the other way. You know, the question is, you know, we've got billions of dollars falling, out, you know, out of the market instantly getting wiped out. As Jay said, disintegrated, you know, instantly. You know, how much pain are they going to bring? How much pain, how much pain are they going to bring? So my advice is be diversified through buying slow because I'm not selling just because I know they want us to. And they're activating all these idiots like Jim Cramer. They're all these, these puppets. Sorry, I'm rambling. I know this is getting a little lame, but just average cost. Take your time. You know, the most fortunate experience I've ever had in crypto that was painful was the four years bear cycle that, you know, I thought, you know, what am I going to do? I might as well just keep buying. It's so cheap. And, you know, and that was the initial thought before I started educating myself on this space and what the utility is. They want to talk to you. You want to believe these guys like it's worth nothing. It's going away. It's nothing. Well, it's funny. The whole world has a different perspective on it. You know, this is the United States. And believe me, believe me, you. <laughs> they're going to be, they're playing this game. They're probably playing it better than anyone else. They just want to hurt us a little bit. Unfortunately. Please like and subscribe. The end is coming. How bad will, how hot will hell, hell be? But you made it this far, you can make it the rest of the way. You know, it's like you're, at this point, you're in the, you swam halfway across the ocean of pain. What's the point of turning around? You're halfway to the other side, probably closer. Cross the town, the young girl plays guitar In a government yard where she whispers from afar Take me, take me, baby, take me, I'm yours